Hello everyone, uh, it's a privilege to be able to reach out to you this blessed Monday morning. Uh, I sense that the Lord is doing a lot in our day and our time and um, for a while now the Lord has been prompting me to begin to shout on the rooftops, to begin to publish some of the things that he has spoken to me in secret. Uh, well, I would like us to just bow our heads in prayer if you are watching this broadcast and just trust that the Lord will enlighten the eyes of our understanding and give us clear insights to the things that He wants to draw our attention to. So, Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for another privilege and opportunity to be able to hear you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the season that the church, ourselves, and the nations are in right now. We thank you for you are opening our ears and you are giving us understanding on how to be able to navigate the season. Lord, we ask that you speak your word expressly to us in the name of Jesus. My name is uh, Prophet Fanny Bekuride. By the grace of God, um, the Lord has raised me up in the prophetic ministry for a season and the Lord has been revealing a lot of things to me. You know, the Bible says in um, the book of Amos chapter 3, verse 7, and that's where we're going to um, get our discussion from. I'll just read that Amos 3, verse 7. It says that... Um, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto the servants, the prophets. The Lord God will do absolutely nothing without revealing it to the prophets. So when we see um, the present crisis and pandemic and all the things that are going on in the world, our first question as the body of Christ is to ask, was this revealed? And if you are one that is conversant with social media, in this season a whole lot have been thrown online, you will see that there are several um, prophets of God in different um, parts of, of the world that the Lord used in bringing the attention of the people to what we are experiencing right now. But as it has always been in scriptures, people would not always listen as they should. But I know that after this pandemic, that people will give more attention to the voice of the Lord. So the Bible tells us in Amos chapter 3 verse 7, that the Lord surely will do nothing, absolutely nothing, without revealing it to his prophets. So one of the, the, the responsibility of prophets of the Lord. For, uh, okay, let me just back up a bit and give us a, a little bit of understanding of, of of the fivefold ministry. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter five, as um, Ephesians four, that when the Lord Jesus Christ ascended on high, He gave fivefold gifts to the church, which is His body. He gave the gift of the apostles, the prophets, the pastor, the teachers, and the evangelists. And the Bible tells us that the apostles and the prophets are pivotal to the building up of the body they are the uh, the bible says the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets now the role of the prophet like any other gift is first of all to equip the, the saints uh, cause the saints to come into the full measure of the stature of christ and unveil the prophetic dimension of christ because we know that the very first prophet is christ and he told us himself, he said, the prophet is without honor. He referred to the statement of Moses when he said that the Lord your God will raise a prophet referring to himself. So we know that Christ is a prophet. So when we're talking on the prophetic ministry, the prophetic ministry is not just about um, you giving a word to somebody. It is forced to unveil the prophetic dimension of Christ. Now, the prophetic ministry uh, is the eyes of the body as it were and the mouth of the body. God allows prophets to see, to gain insight, to watch what he is doing, and then they begin to blow the alarm and sound it and declare to the, to the church 
The church is supposed to pick it up from there and act according to the revealed word of God. Now, the Bible says in Ezekiel that if a watchman, a watchman can also be a prophet, if a watchman sees a sword coming and does not warn the people, what happens is that when judgment comes on the people, then the blood of the people will be required from the watchman. But if the watchman wants the people and the people don't pay heed to what the watchman is saying, then it will not be uh, uh, the responsibility of whatever judgment will not be on the watchman or the prophet, but it will be on the people. So this morning, by the grace of God, I'm standing as one of the prophetic voices that the Lord has raised in this season to draw our attention to some of the things that the Lord is revealing. Now, uh, we know that COVID-19 has hit the earth and we're seeing a whole lot of uh, reshaping, reawakening, uh, fear, terror, nations taking drastic measures, it hitting the church, individuals also, and all of that. Uh, what, what is God's thought concerning this? What is God's response? How would God have us respond to this? Praise the Lord. Now, I want to start by saying that we are the church of the living God. The church is the ecclesia of God. It is the government of God. When the Bible says concerning the Christ in Isaiah 9 that the government shall rest upon his shoulders, we all know that the shoulder is where the body is. So if we are the body, then it means that the government of God is resting on his shoulders. And there are lots of things that we are crying out to God to do that God will not do anything about until we do it. So God expects us to have heard from him, to have blown the alarm, and then for the church to take the initiative because the church is the legislative arm of God on the face of the earth. The church is also the executive arm of God on the face of the earth. The church is the government of God. When God wants to do anything on the face of the earth, he will pass through the church because the church is his legal access to the earth. The Bible tells us that the heavens belong to God, the earth he has given to the sons of, of men. The church is God's legal gateway for God to be able to assess the earth and release things on the face of the earth. So as it has to do with the present um, um, pandemonium and crises and um, sickness and all sorts that we have heard, I am standing today to give a word. On the 12th of March, 2020, I had a revelatory encounter. I woke up with the Lord giving me a word, and he does that a lot of time. The evil day. It was so clear. I jumped up from my bed, and I was wondering, okay, what is the evil day? And then I went to the place of prayer and began to seek the Lord. And the Lord drew my attention to Ephesians chapter 6, beginning from verse 10 through 18, where he, the church is admonished to put on the whole armor of God so that the church will be able to stand and withstand in the evil day. So the Lord says to me, he said, there is a day that scripture describes as the evil day. And he said, you are, listening to me, I re-emphasize, you are presently in the evil day. Now that, that shook me. I'm like, okay, the evil day. Wow, that's serious. Then I kept on praying in the course of the week and just seeking the face of God. And I recalled that in December, while we were preparing for a particular meeting and then also preparing to enter the new year, the Lord had spoken to me prior to that, to this time, that we had stepped into the day of the Lord. So I began to ask the Lord, so what day are we in? Is it the day of the Lord 
or is it the evil day? And while seeking the Lord, the Lord responded by saying the parable of the wheat and the tares. The parable of the wheat and the tares. Now, if you are someone that is very, very familiar with scripture, you will see that the parable of the wheat and the tares has to do with when uh, the Lord gave a parable of the end of the age and then he, he talked on a sower that sowed wheat on his farm and then all of a sudden they discovered some other, the, the, the workers came to him and said, sir, did we not plant good, good um, crops here? How come we're seeing something else? You know, let's go and take it off. And he said, no, leave it alone. Leave it alone till the harvest. At harvest, you will separate, it will be very glaring that this is wheat, this is tares, you will separate the wheat from the tares. So, if you are also someone that is familiar with the body of Christ and some of the prophetic words that we received as we were moving from 2019 into 2020, you will see that a constant phrase that were on the lips of a lot of men of God was that we have stepped into harvest. They kept saying, this is the season of harvest. The Lord gave me that word and he gave a couple of other persons the same word. So if it is the season of harvest, one of the things that we should be expecting is that we're going to be seeing both the wheat and the tares coming to their prime. The, the, the full bloom manifestation of the wheat and the full bloom manifestation of the tares. Now, scriptures gives us an explanation of what the wheat is and what the tares are. The wheat depicts the sons of the kingdom. The tares depict the sons of the devil. And the Bible said that at harvest, he will separate the sons of the kingdom from the sons of the devil. So we have stepped into the evil day. And we're going to see, I am not a prophet of doom, but I am telling us things that the Lord has told me because he said, blow the trumpet, sound it. We're going to see a lot of this evil being unleashed from the pit of hell, but true men. And through all kinds of devices. Because the souls of the devil are coming to the place of maturity also. And they will be manifesting wickedness at its height. Now the good news here is that we are not afraid and we are not intimidated by the sons of the devil. The sons of the kingdom are also being called to a place of maturity. Because it will take the matured sons of God to be able to combat the sons of the devil. So how does this relate with all of this as I try to just round off? The Bible said when Christ had been giving birth to that Herod through the wise men knew that a king had been given birth to. And what was the response of Herod? He wanted to lay hands on Christ to kill him. And because of the evil mind he had, he sent um, his servants, his warriors, his soldiers into town to kill all male children from the age of two downwards. And then the Bible tells us that is to be fulfilled a word that was spoken by the prophet that said Rachel was weeping for her children. Now in the course of last month, uh, last year, while praying the Lord brought that word, Rachel weeping for her children. And I was like, okay, what's going on? But I really didn't get any interpretation until now. A part of what the adversary wants to use COVID-19 and other viruses that he wants to inject into the system to do is that he wants to go ahead of God to kill off, in quotes, the Jesuses. He wants to take out the sons of the kingdom because he knows that his time is short. And just like in the days of Christ where a decree was given, oh, kill everybody and there was massive um, death and all of that, the, the strategy of the devil is always death. The Bible tells us in John chapter 10, verse 10, that whenever he manifests, he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The devil's target are Christians. The devil's target are the sons of God. The devil's target is to 
take you out even if you 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 don't subscribe to him on the earth okay go to heaven where you are not useful to him in court so what is heaven expected of us Ephesians chapter 6 from 10 to 18 our re responsibility in this season is to put on the whole armor of God all 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 we need to read that as I close I'm not going to be assuming that you know what is there. Let's see what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6. Now, for the sake of time, I may not be able to give us in details. I believe in another broadcast, I'll be able to give us the details of the army of the Lord and what the Lord revealed to me. But I want to close with, with this um, talk on preparation and the evil day. So we go to Ephesians chapter 6 beginning from verse 10 and it says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wires of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness and high places wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore this is the evil day. We have a responsibility to take on the armor of God. We have a responsibility to withstand the adversary. And we have a responsibility to stand in the evil day. It is my prayer that the Lord will enable and empower you to stand firm in the faith in this season. I speak over your life that you will not falter in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak over your life that this evil tide will not run you over in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, seeing eyes and hearing ears, they come from the Lord. I pray that the Lord opens your eyes and open the ears of your ears so that you understand what he is doing in this season and that you'll be swift to obey the instruction of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak the blessing of the Lord over you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.